Good evening, YouTube, Booktube, Humanity, the sons and daughters of Adam, the sons and daughters of the second Adam, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of Israel, the, the King of Glory. I hope you're all doing well out there in the, uh, the fallen Adamic world. I thought I'd make a video, do a Monday Reads. I'm using my newest camera. I'm still debating about getting another camera, but uh, I'm not really sure because this camera seems to be working. I've decided to retire my other camera. It's just, it's broken. And I don't want to go getting it, getting it uh, paid, getting it fixed. If I was to get it fixed, I have to drive all the way to Grand Rapids where I bought the camera about four or five years ago. And then they mail it to some repair place. And then it might cost me half as much as I paid for it. A new camera would cost me about $400, which to me is not much money. So I don't know. I'm waiting to, to see when the spirit leads. <laughs> I suppose. Anyway, I thought I'd make a Monday Reads. Today is September the 23rd. And according to my calendar, this is officially the first day of autumn 2019. Now, my wife said that Sunday, last Sunday, was the first day of autumn. And some say, no, yeah, today is supposed to be the first day. Well, so... I hope we all have a good uh, autumn. So it is September the 23rd is a Monday. It is 9-11 here in West Michigan. And I just finished mopping the floors. <laughs> My wife wants me to mop the floors every week. I'm good to do it every couple of months, but it's kind of terrible. Uh, because, I don't know, I try to keep the house in order. Now, it could be dusted. I did vacuum, I did mop, I, I did the laundry, I do those kinds of things. I'm not really into cooking because my wife and I, we have different diets. My wife is more into salads. She tries to keep her weight off and things like that. To me, I just eat to survive. That's all I do. I eat what, and whatever is around the house. I don't, and I don't really eat that much. Uh, the reason why I weigh as much as I do is because I eat a lot of sandwiches, a lot of cereal, oatmeal, bread, and things like that. I'm not really into, I don't really like eating, but you have to eat. If you don't, you're just going to starve. And, and I should exercise. I should do that. I should take a walk every single day. But I think about it, and I think about it, and then before you know it, hey, it's... 9 12 at night another day has gone by so <coughs> i want to get my glass of wine which is behind me i'm celebrating uh the first day of autumn <laughs> the so um i there's a there's some scripture been going through my mind that i read the other day in a book and i thought i'd read it it's from romans chapter 10. now I know here in book two, people read Shakespeare out loud. They read poetry. They read Homer. They read the Iliad. They read all kinds of stuff. And so I thought, well, the Bible, why can't I read the Bible? And these verses have came to my mind when I was, and they've been on my mind the last couple of days. And it's in the Epistle of Romans, which is in the New Testament. It says, for Christ, it says here in verse 4 of chapter 10 of Romans, For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. For Moses writes about the righteousness which is of the law. The man who does those things shall live by them. But the righteousness of faith speaks in this way. Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above, or who will descend, descend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead, but what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth, and in your heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth 
the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You know, I've been hearing those verses for almost 50 years, and I still... I still, I pray to the Holy Spirit to quicken them to my heart, to make them real to me. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him, on the Lord Jesus Christ, will not be put to shame. For whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I mean, that's, when you think about that, that's just... That's the glorious gospel of sovereign free grace. So this is Monday Reads. And so what I do in these videos is not so much going to say what I'm going to read throughout this week. You know, this is the last week of September. Next week we go into October. As I mentioned, my wife will be going away for a week. Every year she, she has four girlfriends that she goes off for a week and they just hang out and and you know they all are all been nurses some are retired and they go someplace and they watch movies and they eat and they go for walks and they just hang out for a week and they've been doing that for years so uh, next week I'll probably make a lot of videos because I'll be alone here I won't have any distractions but this morning, I'm just going to, when I, this is Monday Reads. What did I read today to Monday? And some of these things I'll be reading throughout the week. Well, I've been reading, participating in Christ's exploration, Explorations in Paul's Theology and Spirituality by J. Michael J. Gorman. I've read about 41 pages. When I read this, I'm looking up scripture, you know, I'm writing in my diary notes and I'm pondering and meditating and and uh, before you know it, it's 12 o'clock noon. So I also got out to read, uh, I've been reading this off and on to Divine Christ, Paul, the Lord Jesus and the Scriptures of Israel by David B. Katz. He, quote, he quoted from this book and the footnotes this morning. So I got this out to look at it again. So then I went to the book nook I, on Mondays. I volunteer at the local library used bookstore, the book nook from 10 to 1. And when I was there, I took with me to read Ducks Newburyport by Lucy Ellman. I'm still reading this. I've read... 269 pages. It is 1,013 pages. I, I'm still enjoying it. Now, it's not. Now, when you read this, I would recommend that you read it maybe for two hours, three hours at the max, and then go to something else. But I, you know, I'm enjoying it. I I I recommend it. But when I was at the book nook, uh, I always go there and look around the store for things to buy and bring home. And I found another Lewis Ackenkloss book that I did not have in my Aken, Lewis Ackenkloss collection. Fellow Passengers, a novel in portraits. And so I read some of this when I was at the book nook. I read 13 pages. Really enjoyed it. I do plan to read this this week. Well, I really shouldn't because <laughs> I got so much to read. But uh, I really, I have about 24 of his novels in our library. He wrote a lot of books. I mean, he wrote, I mean, look at that. How many he wrote. And uh, he wrote nonfiction too. I have his biography in Edith Wharton. And I like to get his book, Reading Henry James. I should look that up tonight on Amazon. <coughs> a 
Another book I got at the book nook today that I read was this book. This is called the Humb Humb Hum Hum No right. Humboldt the Humboldt Humboldt Current 19th Century Exploration on the Roots of American en Environmentalism by Aaron Sachs. Now Humboldt as you all know, I showed recently that last year I read from, I got into 187 pages in this biography of Alexander Van Humboldt's. Humboldt is called The Invention of Nature, Alexander Van hum Humboldt's New World by Andrea Wolf. And I was really enjoying this and I wish I could get, I should get back into it because I was really getting into it really. Uh, but then I got sidetracked. But then I found this book at the book nook today. And uh, it says here, The Naturalist and Explorer, Alexander Van Humboldt, 1769 to 1859, achieved unparalleled fame in his own time, particularly in the United States. Today, however, he and his enormous legacy to the American thought are virtually unknown. In Humboldt Current, Aaron Sachs seeks to re reverse this undeserved obscurity by tracing Humboldt's pervasive influence on American history, specifically looking at the lives and careers of several 19th century explorers who use Humboldt's notion of, quote, unity and diversity and his open-hearted spirit of exploration to develop a critique of their increasingly industrialized society. Among the dozens of intellectuals influenced by Humboldt, Sachs suggests four stand out. Edgar Allan Poe's friend, J. N. Reynolds, who explored the South, sea, the South Seas from 1829 to 1831, and more than anyone else at that time established the significance of exploration in American culture. Clarence King, the first director of the U.S. Geological Survey, George Wallace Melville, an Arctic explorer and chief engineer of the U.S. Navy for 16 years, who expressed deep skepticism about American expansionism and imperialism. John Murr, the founder of the Sierra Club, who launched his environmental career as an explorer of Alaska and Siberia. And then it goes on. So I got this, and I read some of this at the book nook today. So I read some of this. And then I read some of Achenkloss, and then I read at the book nook some of Lucy's Elman's Ducks Newbury Port. So those are things I read at the book nook today. When I got home, now I did stop at a thrift store on the way home because I had to pick up coffee beans, and I stopped at Community Action House, which provides clothing and food and other things for the poor in the community. And I did find some thrift store books, but I'm not going to show them. Uh, I did get two books in the mail today. I ordered this from U Amazon UK because of the cover. The cover of this book I didn't like in the US edition, so I ordered it from Amazon UK. It was shown in a video of a booktuber I watched and it's called Against Memoir by Michelle T. This is kind of like a, a radical feminist. It's considered queer literature. But I like memoirs of all kinds of people. I mean queers, uh, writers, painters, thinkers, so I got that in the mail today, and uh, I was reading the first one. Uh, it's kind of like essays. So I got that in the mail today. Against, against memoir, uh, complaints, confessions, and criticisms by Michelle T. So I got that. And then I got, a, I was looking at the other night, I was looking once again at the Yale University Press uh, website, and I noticed they had this biography by Max Eastman, A Life by Chris Poth, 
Christoph Isch, Ischheimer, can't pronounce it, but I first came across, well I've, I've known about Max Eastman for a long time, and especially in this book I read last year, Young Radicals and the War for American Ideas by Jeremy McCarter. He has a section in here, and I'll just read this. Based on six years of extensive archival research, Jeremy, Jeremy McCarter's dramatic narrative brings to life the exploits of Randolph Byrne, the bold social critic who strove for a dream of America that was decades ahead of its time, Max Eastman, the charismatic poet, propagandist of Greenwich Village, whose magazine The Masses fought the government for the right to oppose the war, Walter Littman, a boy wonder of socialism who forged a new path to seize new, opportun new opportunities, Alice Paul, a the suffragist, you know, like the women's right to vote, the suffragist leader who risked everything to win women the right to vote, John Reed, the swashbuckling journalist and impresario who was an eyewitness to and a key player in the Russian Revolution. So I read about Max Eastman in here and I wanted to know, know more about him. And then I found that uh, Yale University Press had published this biography of Max Eastman. It was only really cheap. It was like, you know, one thing about biographies, you can always find them cheap. Because people don't read biographies. People read popular literature. They don't read biographies. That's why I like getting biographies, because they're so easy to get. It says here in the flap here, Max Eastman, born 1883, died 1969, a prolific poet, editor, and political gadfly, gadfly, helped shape the 20th century. While researching this masterful work, acclaimed biographer Christoph Ischheimer was granted unprecedented access to Eastman family archive, allowing him to document little known aspects of the famously handsome, charismatic radical, considered one of the hottest radicals of his time. Eastman edited two of the most important modernist magazines, The Masses and The Liberator, published books on poetry, laughter, and campaign for women's suffrage, sexual freedom, and peace. A fierce critic of Joseph Stalin, Eastman befriended and translated Leo Trotsky, remained unafraid to express unpopular views, drawing criticism from both conservatives and the left, set against the backdrop of several decades of political and ideological turmoil, interweaving Eastman's singular life with stories of the fascinating people he knew, loved. This book will have broad appeal to readers interested in 20th century history, in politics, intellectual history, and literature. So I look forward to getting into this. I really enjoyed this. I, I read almost half of it. Uh, so, so I got this in the mail today, and then I got Against Memoir by Michael Michelle T. Like a smart kid with dirty crayon explaining to us all how she sees God. <laughs> Elaine Miles, quote. So I got those in the mail. So that's uh, my Monday reads uh, tonight. Like I said, I mopped the floors. I'm making this video. And I probably, I don't know, I should read what I have been reading and not getting into anything new. So I don't know. Um, I have been reading this evening, Stephen, St Stephen Spender's journals, 1939 to 1983. I've been reading a lot of this. I'm almost halfway through this. I'm really enjoying it. This is edited by John Goldsmith. I was reading here about his journals from 1954 to 1958. He writes about, he was very friends with the poet Auden, which is really interesting to me. So yeah, yeah, I really recommend this Invention of Nature, Alexander Van Humboldt's New World by Andrea Wolf. I really, I really enjoyed that. Enjoyed both these books. I should get back into them. Yeah. I'm always getting sidetracked.
So I hope you're having, you had a good weekend. Thank you for the new subscribers. Thank you for the comments. Yeah, I'll probably read this tonight because there are essays, the little short chapters, something to, you know, I like reading all over the map. You know, I, I read everything. So yeah, tomorrow's a Tuesday. I don't know what I'm gonna do tomorrow. I'll probably just read and write and feed the birds and you know, before you know it, it'll be time to go to bed. <laughs> so I sign off, hope you're all doing well. Until next time, bye.